as we study, we receive understanding, we receive revelation, we receive impartation, and we receive the grace to do in Jesus' name. Amen. And not the Amen. grace to do, Amen. but the Amen. grace to teach other people. Amen. 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 Now, a lot of you have fasted for years without even understanding what a fast is. And tonight you see what a fast is. Isaiah 58, verse 6. It's not this the fast that I have chosen. That's Father God speaking. To lose the bounds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. Is it not dividing your bread with the hungry? And bring the poor who are outside into your house. Now, this is his own fast. Okay? So, if you really are doing relationship, then you want to do what he requires. You know, in normal life, if you really want to have a great relationship with your friend, with your husband, with your sisters, or brothers, you want to know what they want. Their, their values, especially core values. And then you do what you live accordingly. It's the same with daddy. And bring the poor who are outcast into your house. When you seek, when you see the naked to cover them and not hit your face from your flesh. Do you see that he has prescribed his own fast in two verses, verse 6 and verse 7. Verse 8 will tell you the benefits of doing daddy's fast. Let's go to verse 1. Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and shout. Who invited Ebenezer? Somebody invited Ebenezer? Who did? I did. He's the Ghanaian guy that we prayed for. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Wow. 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 Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. Verse, verse, verse 2. Yet they seek me daily. Let's back up. Cry out aloud. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. What is going to be the sin? Fasting your own way. Show them their sin. Now we're about to see their sin. You seek me daily. Eh? Seeking him daily is a sin. Ah, yeah, yeah. You seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that has done righteous and has not forsaken the ordinances of their God. So, no, not the seeking, it's the forsaking of the ordinances, meaning they forsaken the ordinances, but they are seeking daily. Mm. That's where the sin is. You have forsaken, but now the question is how are you seeking? Why are you seeking? If you have forsaken the ordinances, they asked for me, they asked me for the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Eh, eh. Why have you, why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no notice? Certainly, this is their sin. They are seeking God from a place of their own way. They forsaken the way God wants ordinances, the way God wants them to seek him, and they are doing their own thing. And then God is giving, enumerating the other things that they do, which is not correct on the day of the fast, and they call it a fast. He says, certainly on the day of your fast, you find your desires, means you get your own pleasure, and are excited, what? And ex something on all your laborers, means you cheat your laborers. Certainly, you fast for strife and debate. You see, you can tell now why every time you fast is like people irritate you because the enemy know that that's the one of the disqualification. No matter what you're doing, if you're fighting and quarreling on your fast, that is a, uh -uh, that's not the kind I want. And you strike with the fist of wickedness. You do not fast as you do this day. And make your voice to be heard on high. 
You see that? He's telling that if you do the kind, this kind of a fast, nobody's going to hear you. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head as a bush roar and to spread out sakatosha so, so, <laughs> clothes, sack so clothes and arches under him? Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Now, before somebody get confused and say, ah, that's Old Testament. No, this one book of Isaiah is neither Old nor no New Testament. I tell you the truth. Scriptures in the book, Isaiah is one of the most outstanding um, Messianic prophet. And even after the Messiah had come, I'm telling you the truth. Are we understanding? Yes, mama. Yes, mama. Yes, mama. So it is not Old Testament. It is not New Testament. It is kingdom. Write it down. It is kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is how we live in the kingdom. What are the things that daddy will consider you fasting? When you go the extra mile to share your food. Now, why do we as a ministry uh, um, get to, 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 to give food to homeless every time we fast? Because we understand if you give food to a homeless person, it makes them feel at home. You've already satisfied the nakedness covering part. Sometimes we give the money uh, um, to the, one of the places where we always give to. The women, their location, they give clothes, they give shoes, they give food, they even preach the gospel. I volunteer there. When you understand these principles, most of our spiritual parents, they understand this principle. And they do it. Look at the consequences of fasting, right? Verse 8. Then your light shall break forth as the morning, and your healing shall spring forth quickly. Now you understand why a true kingdom citizen should not, ought not to forsake. Because sickness now, be, uh, wellness, health now be like a spring. Meaning before the sickness even comes, that the thing that makes sickness die is already welling in and out of your system. I'm telling you the truth. These are the secrets. Amen. And your healing shall spring forth quickly. Even if you happen to fall sick, healing is quick. And your righteousness shall go before you. This favor, mm -mm. there's no place for this favor. No place at all. No place. No place for this favor. The glory of the Lord shall be your real guide. Are you kidding me? Who will harm you when God is your bodyguard? Mm. Then you shall call and the Lord shall answer. You shall cry and he shall say, here I am. Let me even shock you. This is not even for individuals. It's for a nation. Lord, it's right there. You see, it's right there. Go back and read. Then you shall call, and the Lord shall answer. You shall cry, and He shall say, "Here I am." If you take away, now He's giving the next set of instructions, and then He will tell you the benefit of the next set of instructions. But I don't want us to pass this level. My God, listen. The choice is yours. You can do religion, you can do tradition, you can do same or same or, or you can do different. This is fasting. This is a recommendation. Or we'll look about, it. there are two sets of instructions and there are benefits that are attached to the instructions. We'll look at from verse 7 down, from verse 9 tomorrow. I beg you, after this, Isaiah 59 is open to you. Go down and take your own notes. Go sit down and take your own personal note. All this busyness is why we don't make progress in the kingdom. Hmm, I tell you the truth. We don't make progress because we are too busy. Too busy. Too busy. Too busy. 
Too busy. Go sit down after tonight. Ask the Lord, what are you showing me in this book? You know, no matter what we see here corporately, no matter what we're teaching, that's why the Holy Ghost is right there. All of us are listening to Miss Ima, but we are hearing differently. Why do we hear different? Because purpose is different. Assignments are different. As the book is open, I told you, or I had read Isaiah 58. I heard it taught for years, but I didn't get the revelation. One of those fads in this family, the book got open. From that day, I've been studying and studying. It's like a mining. You dig, you get a piece. You keep digging, you see another piece. You dig, you see a piece. You hear somebody preaching on that chapter. You listen to them. You pray. You meditate. Before you know it, it opens up. It opens up. I pray that tonight you go see and I say, Ah, Lord. So I've been fasting for years and thinking I'm fasting. Meanwhile, I'm not. You can know for sure that you were not doing it because this kind of result you didn't get. Go back. Even go up to verse 9. Read verse 9. Pick the instructions there and see the benefits. One of my best things, I'm telling you, I'm going to say it tonight. <laughs> I can't wait for tomorrow. I'll wait for tomorrow, but I'll see something. The next set of instructions, look at one of the benefits, verse 14. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to write upon the high places of the earth. Eh? And fit you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. If you were doubting who was speaking. <laughs> you know what the heritage of Jacob is? Uh, I discovered it the other day. I say yes. It's what they call the Meshach anointing. Hallelujah. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. The heritage of Jacob. Let me show you. It's very clear in the Bible. That's why you want to study. Every time you want to know, you want Thank to you, study, daddy. daddy will open it for you. It's the Meshach anointing. Yeah. The spreading. It's the spreading anointing. When you fast like this, anything you do will mm -hmm. prosper. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Look at Jacob in Laban's mm -hmm. house. What was happening to him? He kept increasing, prospering, mm -hmm. expand to the point where <laughs> the man himself had to say, I'm, I need to go. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's something on me that is causing expansion. I don't think yeah. it's this hiding that will cause me to, to, to be safe. Even if I meet my brother, there's something on me that caused me to expand. Look mm -hmm. at his children. How many went to Egypt and how many came back? Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, mm -hmm. with this menshuk anointing, you prosper. That's Jacob's so heritage, mm -hmm. Jacob's heritage is an expansion grace. It's an expansion spirit. Mm -hmm. A spirit that prosper even when you oppress it. Oh my God! Wow. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Ali Kamasuka, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. See and da la you read the book of Psalms 1 it says when you do the word when you study the word you will be like a tree planted by the rivers this, the riverside and you will bring forth your fruit in season he said whatever you do you will prosper the reason why you see people don't prosper even though they are in church or in the kingdom they don't do the word they don't do the word. When you do the word, the word, the word, you, there's no option you will prosper. Hmm. I dare to tell you, you have entered your season of overwhelming favor. 
Amen. 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 Nothing can Amen. stop you. Nothing Amen. can Amen. stop you. Amen. Nothing. Amen. People will come Amen. from the left to the right. They will favor you. Anyone Amen. that dare to oppress you, they will cause you to grow. Amen. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Ooh. Day two. Day two. There's so much more we can talk about. You see, I do. I could not keep it for tomorrow, or I did not want to keep it for tomorrow because I've been waiting for the day that he will say, "Open Psalms 20, um, 58 again to the family." I've been waiting. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much more. That's that's just the 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 tips, the 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 cherry on top. But we're still going to eat uh, the sweet, sweet, sweet cake. Yes, go back and study. Mm-hmm. Do your own research. What is this heritage of Jacob? Go check it out. Heritage of prosperity. A heritage mm-hmm. of a grace that cannot be limited. And the good thing mm-hmm. is that it's not in the hands of anybody. You see how many opposition he got? But he, he prospered. It's a, it's a grace that makes sure that even when everyone is suffering, you will have plenty. It's a grace that says you can come from the back and overtake. Uh-huh. Wow. Like heritage wow. of Jacob. Wow. Now, let me, let me show us. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought we were going to. Anyway, I told you, did you all get your lunch ready? <laughs> <laughs> you're not leaving the same get your lunch you thought you was playing you know when mama come Luna, it is different look at this he said and feed you I don't want to talk about the high places of the earth let's stay with heritage first he said I will it, it, this is not about you trying to go take the heritage of Jacob or find it anywhere no I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob means God himself daddy feeds you Wow. You, you, when you know your part of the covenant, Miss Novelet said already, when you know what to do in your own kingdom and do it, that's what you need to know. You know it, you do it. The benefits cannot be kept from you. It can't. It cannot. What are they supposed to do? Make sure that every time you're blessed, you share. That's it. It's not even complicated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every time you're mm-hmm. fasting, the other day I had a, a fast to prepare for the conference. And when I finished, I said, Lord, who do I sow my seed into? I prayed. I prayed. I said, where do I sow my seed? Who do I sow my seed into? And the Lord, bam, show me the person. It was a big family member. I said, hey, I've been fasting and daddy said, sow my seed into you. They were so excited. They said, hey. They were very excited. I don't want to teach what, I want to teach what I do. This is the reason. When you teach what to do, your hearers receive your spirit. That's what impartation is. They receive your spirit and they are able to do. I know you have heard, you've received the same grace with which I live and I know your life can never be the same. Amen? Amen. 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 And you know, as a ministry, we do that. So you're not hearing theories, you're hearing people that do what the, the people that are teaching what they do. We're not doing what we teach. We do and then we teach. Yeah. And that's how it should be. Amen. I keep hearing a pull to Isaiah 58. I want to go to First Second Kings. Don't be distracted. The things you're hearing tonight, they are destiny altering. They can change the trajectory of your whole generation. Not just you. We talked about the other day. We said, what if Obama is your friend? A very good friend. He likes you, like, like you, like you. And you need to get a house like Mama Ima has been believing to get a house. $5,000. What's that? That's like his peanut no. change. He'll give it to you. That's his peanut change. Okay, but then we're not talking about Obama, a human being that's limited. We're talking about the God of the whole world. If you decide to make him your friend, he has billions of ways to meet your need. But sometimes the enemy will blind the eyes of people and let them focus on their need and miss the bigger blessing of walking and living a life of the covenant. 
Oh, I tell you, the life of the covenant is the easiest life you can live. The kingdom life. I remember one day one of my friends were talking. He said, oh, Miss Ima, you know, if you just get a job and you work for just like two, three months, oh, you buy your house, you know. And it's true. Three, four months, I have a good down payment. Especially if I work as a therapist privately. And if I have a job and then I have a private one, uh, that's easy. Imagine. Especially in my profession, they don't tell you how much to charge a client. You make a decision. Family that I'm specializing in is difficult. There are very few. I wish my mother here she would confirm to you. Very few. The day I told her this is what I'm specializing in, she say, "Yeah, what are you trying to do to yourself?" She always called me Pastor Emma. She said, "Pastor Emma, please." People are going to fight in your office. I say, "It's fine." My personality is even good for it. I'll just sit down there and look at you all and say, stop. <laughs> I talk to adults like that. I say, stop. I'll raise my voice and then they'll be surprised. And then they'll stop. After all, they'll stop. Then I start teaching them and helping them. All right. I was talking so I can get the transition. I can get the clearance to go to Second Kings. So that's it for Isaiah 58. When you're fasting, know what you're doing and do it right and get the benefits we're going to keep digging i was asking daddy the other day i said but daddy when we fast all we do is give to the um the, the pantry so they can have food he said no go back and check you give money to this particular pantry they clot people remember when you were there i said yes he said so giving money to this pantry satisfy verse six and seven i was excited i was very wow. excited that's why we never, we never, anybody that works with me will tell you, we have never, 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 never lack anything in this ministry, this assignment. Never. Sure. Never. No good thing has he ever we hold from us. When I was stepping in the ministry, he told me, I was, I was like, well, I'm already in, so suffer, good, enjoyment, I don't care. He told me clearly, and I've said it. I, what I'm about to say, many of you can come, you can even finish the statement. He said, you do ministry stress-free. I've never heard anybody do ministry stress-free. Most of the time, preachers will cry or complain. Now, stress-free don't mean I won't have persecution, please. Come on. I have enough of it, and that's why I'm strong, because I eat them. Their bread. Eat. Even if persecution, even if the enemy don't want to persecute you, false brothers or sisters, brederanda, they will persecute you. <laughs> and it's all good. But they only make you stronger. It's true. All right. Second Kings chapter 2. Um, to make it easy, so I don't keep us too long, I wrote down um, a few things that I want us to look at. I said, um, direct service to the man or a man of God anyone that is anointed that you value is honor for you to be able to show honor to somebody you want to serve them and serving them with focus serving them diligently is a show of honor you see here that Elisha refused to allow his master go on whatever journey he was telling him he was going on without him. He decided to serve him. He didn't want him to go without him because he understood that his role was the one that poured water on his hand, meaning they had to be together. What if the man of God needs? Now, pouring water on his hand don't mean literally, means serving him. So he was there to make sure that what if on this journey he needs help with one thing or the other? We saw it. The kingdom system of honor. If you have not listened to that message, you're missing half of your life. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Now, you all thought that I had that message, right? No. The first day of the conference I'm teaching, I kept hearing kingdom system of honor. King, I said, at one point I asked you, oh, have you ever heard... <laughs> This message, kingdom system. Did you all remember? I asked that question because I never heard it taught. No way, kingdom system of honor. So after the service, I went into prayer. I said, Holy Spirit, you're about to teach something. You're about to show us something. I am interested because that's what you do. 
I said, I'm interested, Holy Spirit. What is this, this a kingdom system of honor? I tell you, I lied not. He started just like he gave me the curriculum for BBI. Less than five minutes. He gave me the system that we looked at on Sunday morning, on Saturday morning. I've never heard it taught. I definitely had on my mind how to honor and the benefits. But he said, no, it's the system. And we had to look at all of that. So you see that it's part of the kingdom system of honor, service. When you honor a man, you see somebody that you value, serve them. Number two, he was focused, very focused. You see how much distraction he got? You think you're going to serve uh, uh, um, or honor somebody without distractions? No. Mm -mm. Don't forget, we're looking at what? What's the purpose of the fast? What's the focus? Somebody, remind me. What are we fasting? If you all don't talk, we'll just go home. What are we fasting about? Oh, no. You don't no, want to no, save no. Mm -hmm. So you see that in this kingdom, you won't save like that. Somebody's going to get in your way. You're going to hear some things. You're going to see things you don't like. But you have to stay focused. How can your own mentor tell you, don't follow me? I'm going somewhere, but don't come. He says, it's going to better. Now you live better. You're going to Jer Jericho. You leave Jericho. You're going to Jordan. And you know one thing with Elijah, Elijah, he was a very focused man. I think this is the first time Elisha is looking at him and he's like, I'm going somewhere. And then by the time they arrive, they say, I'm going to another place. And then again, another place. And then another place. He had to be focused. Please, please, I beg you, focus. Look at your life. Who is that one person? Who is that? Who are those two people? Who is this relationship that has benefited your destiny? You're going to drop it because somebody don't like them. You're going to stop serving now because you're being challenged in one way or the other. Why not even communicate instead of being distracted? Ah, the next one, the system that he used, patience, very patient. Look at verse 10 with me, please. He said, you have asked for a difficult thing. But if you see me when I am taken from you, it would happen to you. If not, it will not. <laughs> I love this man of God. He's my kind of person. He said, if you are staying here, stay. If you don't, go. But I will tell you the truth. This double portion is easy. But it demands patience. That's it. It wasn't going to be complicated. And look at something I saw today. Hey, verse 11. As they continue to walk and as they continue walking and talking, immediately, that's how it feels to me. A chariot of fire. What if at this point he said, um, you know what? If you stay here and see me when I'm going, it will happen. If you don't, it won't. And he said, ah, I follow you for too long, by the way. What's that? We've left. I've been following you for years. Now we left better. We went to Jericho. We went to Jordan. And now I'm telling you to give me double portion. I even was begging you that I want to come and you didn't want me to come. Now I follow you these three different towns and cities. We don't know the map to see how long this distance were. But he had followed him for a while. He had the choice. Some of us would be saying, ah, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. I'm done. I've been going to prayer. I've been praying. Every 5 a.m., I'm there. This one, I'm sleeping. Ah, that's the day visitation might come. I tell you the truth. I show up in prayer every day expecting that something different will happen. Why? Because you, God is God. He's a king. You don't tell him when to come out. You don't tell him when to visit you. Mm -mm. You know, there are people who say, say, oh, God lives inside of me. That's it. No matter. I can turn him on and turn him off. Good for you. I believe in the God that lives in me. But I also believe in the monarch of the whole world. That can visit you and change your life. That can do something peculiar to you in a particular day, in a particular place. For his own reasons. Patience. Patience. He almost, if he wasn't patient, he would miss it. We saw loyalty as part of the system. That's number four. Loyalty, faithfulness, or availability. Was he available? Kai, he was. 
very available. Even when they didn't want him, he was available. They, they tried to discourage him. He still was there. Sacrifice. What a sacrifice. He went with him everywhere. He refused to back off. Even when he was coming back. That's even the most outstanding part for me. Look at this. Verse 11. He saw that the chariot separated the two of them. Picture it. You're walking with your mentor on the road and boom, fire comes between the two of you. Carry your mentor and he's gone. And then verse, six, it verse 12, he said, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen, and he, and he did not see him again. Then he grabbed his own cloak and tore them into two pieces. He was frustrated. Elisha was really a relatively calm man. He was patient. Then 13, he picked up the rope of Elijah that fell from him, and he departed, and he returned and stood on the bank of the Jordan, verse 14. And he took the rub of Elijah that fell from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Sacrifice, patient. He could have been so mad. He didn't. Some of all be like, ah, this man of God, you're fake, you're fake, you're fake. I've served you for 50 years. Where's the mantle? Drop the mantle. Give me the mantle. Give me the mantle. They didn't give him any mantle. Did you realize that? Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says it twice. He picked up the mantle or the rub of Elijah. That fell from Elijah. It fell. They didn't hand over to him. It felt like literally fall. I think that he was like, mm -mm. Elisha has served enough, Elijah. Please don't bring this mantle to heaven. We don't need it here. Give it. <laughs> <laughs> we saw it when we were studying on how to transfer the anointing. We saw that if you serve an anointing genuinely, the man or woman of God don't need to lay hands on you. David served so genuinely. He honored him. And so had no choice pronouncing and saying you're more righteous, you'll be king. Even if he didn't do it, David would have been king. Why? Because he served as a protege faithfully. Look again, still in the same, uh, um, no, now verse 14. He said, and he took the rope of Elijah that fell from him. He didn't give it to him. And when he took it, he still believed and honored the man. Even in the man absent, he said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And he worked for him. One of the questions said, what is the door that was opened? The same grace that his master walked in. He walked in. Look at that. He came back. Compare verse 8. Compare verse 8. Oh, miss, am I so far? I've run. I've just skipped everywhere. <laughs> anyway, I will skip when I get to my notes then. Compare verse 8 and verse 15. Then Elijah, verse 8, Elijah took his rock and rolled it up and struck the water and it was divided from one side to the other. Then the two of them crossed on dry ground. Look at verse 15. No, 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 verse 14, sorry. He said he took the, the and he took the rock of Elijah that fell from him. Now Eli, Elisha took the rock, rope of Elijah that fell from him and struck the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? When he has struck the water, it parted from one side to the other and Elisha crossed over. Glory to God. I'm not sure if you're excited. It worked for him. It worked for him. I've told us in this family, DNA cannot be hidden. It can't. It cannot be hidden. Hmm. I'll leave it there. The next thing you saw in him was the fear of God. You know, sometimes when you walk with a man or woman of God or somebody that's anointed, or when you see people that are graced in a particular area, maybe an area that you're interested in, you, 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 you think that, hmm. Okay, I'll give you the conclusion. Every rose has a thorn. Everybody tabulating. Every rose has a thorn by the side. Why? So that if you want to pluck the rose, if you want to smell the roses, you must be brave enough to, 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 to 
pass the tongs. You must be able to be willing to extend your hand carefully, wisely, and go over the, the torn bushes or the torn, the, the little things that are close to the, uh, uh, um, the roses. I tell you the truth, I lie not. There is no minister of the gospel that you listen to. I don't care how perfect they are in doctrine and teaching. Hey, there's one thing they will say a day or on a day that will make you feel like, are you? if I can give you five-fold ministry, you will know that what you just said is stupidity. What am I saying? I know I stretch it. It does not matter. Their mistakes is not the focus. Limitation is not the focus. Do you see something in that person that can bless you, that can make your life go forward? Forget about the tones. Enjoy the roses. Are we saying sin? Oh, no. You all know Miss Ima will never, 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 never tolerate our right sin. Never. It will kill you. You hurt your own self. So that's not what I'm talking about. The fear of the Lord. You see, throughout his relationship with his master, from the beginning, the master didn't even say, come follow me. The master just threw a clock on him. He followed what did he see? What made him follow? The fear of God. Honor oh, for the man of God. Look Amen. at what he said here. You will see that he wasn't following Elijah because he liked him or he hated him. Look at what he said at the end. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? That tells you he knew that it was the Lord God of Elijah that parted the water in the first place. It wasn't Elijah. It's the power of God. So who are you truly serving? You know why people do eye service? Because they don't save the anointing. They don't save the grace of the man or the woman of God. They serve the human being. Now, are we saying you should hate the human being? No. We're saying when it comes to that time, when their witnesses wants to portray and overcome that relationship, remember, remember, there is a God that they are serving. And the, some, the, the difference or the value you saw in that person is because of God. Uh, number what? Is Ima. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I usually don't put numbers, but when I start giving, I begin to count. Number seven, knowledge. He was very knowledgeable. You truly cannot save somebody you don't know. When my our first son was about three years old, most of our communication was with my eyes. I tell you the truth. If there's a way I look him, he know what I'm saying. One day we visited my elder sister. In our church back in Cameroon, we give communion to everybody, even the little children. But when we visited my elder sister, in their church, they don't give little children communion. My son could not understand that. Is it not the same communion that they give him in, in our church? Like, why would they not want to serve him communion? So I gave him the eye. As soon as he saw my eye, he had to go sit down because he was on the line. And I, I, it looked like he was the only boy, the only child on the line to go get the communion. So I gave him the eye. He went and said that. And when we went home, my sister was like, whoa, what level of communication was that? Because he understand how I communicate knowledge. The, the sons of the prophet thought he did not know. My question is, they were truly sons of what prophet? The same Elijah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you all seeing what I'm saying? You have to know who you value. You have to know the person you're serving as a mentor. You have to understand. There's, a, there's a, somebody, the other day I was talking to somebody, and not me talking. There's some, I was in a prayer meeting, so I wasn't praying. There was a prayer meeting, and I was part of the prayer meeting. And somebody said something about Papa Kenneth Copeland. Oh, my father, my daddy. Hey, I felt like calling the overseer, like immediately, and said, you all take this video down before the thunder that is immaculate then protecting her father comes on everybody else. Why am I saying these things? 
if you know Papa Kenny Copman, if you know that man, if you have ever stood by him for five seconds, you can never hate him. I tell you the truth, I lie not. Most of the people we hear things about and believe is because we don't know them. We don't. We don't. Somebody's like, he is so, there, there are some things that some people do when they even call. Papa can give you a fi high five. You will be the one to run away. Ask anybody that go to our church if I'm lying. He can give you. He's so simple. He, you can even see when he teach. There's nothing complicated about him. Are we saying he cannot make mistakes? I don't think so. I think he should. Knowledge. You can't talk about him and I watch you. Because I think I know him. If I'm doing ministry with integrity, it's because I have seen integrity from him. The model we run, Bill, is what we see him to. What about Papa? It's the same. This same day, somebody, the same person that was leading that prayer, started talking about Papa, you're the post father in the Lord. I said, okay, don't, Ima. Don't. Don't. And I had to go to prayer because I was angry. I was angry. I was. I said, Daddy, what was that? He said, well, do you know them? I said, yes, I think I know them. He said, okay. Do you think that person know them? I said, I don't know. But I don't think they have a right to say anything like that. You know, I'm still angry. And I'm telling daddy, that's how I pray. I talk to daddy the way it is. So this is what daddy told me. He said, go back and listen. That person was not being negative. I said, I think they were. They told things they don't know. He said, no, they were not saying. They didn't speak right. Is that it that helped me to understand? He said, that person did not speak right. But this was their intention. But me, I, I don't, if that didn't tell me intention, I won't know intention. What if I just listened to them and then I hated my own man of God and woman of God and people that he was talking about? Hello, what am I saying? When people talk to you about a man that you know, can you truly know a man? Yes. Listen to their spirit. Listen. When you meet people, don't be, don't rush. As this called out to every time we meet somebody and they're like, oh, I love you. I love you so much. Your bill is, I'm listening. I want to meet their spirit. I want to meet their spirit. Because human, we are spirit. We're not bodies. Knowledge, 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 please. Knowledge, I beg you. Get to know if it's your husband. Get to know your husband for yourself before the enemy start lying to you. The enemy will say, oh, he was late because he had to stop by one woman's house. You know that this man struggled to even, oh, we have blessing in the house. I, you know your wife for yourself. Is this woman truly against you? Or she's ignorant? Knowledge. I know I've dwelled there too much. I beg you, know for yourself. Know for yourself. The, the sons of the prophet, they make sure they give him the wrong focus. Where are you going? He's going today. He said, I know. Somehow, Elisha know, knew that when I see him go, if I will follow this man to the end, I will get the mantle. He knew it. He knew it. He was knowledgeable. I'm rounding up. I wrote here my concluding statement for tonight. Honor is very costly. Honor is intentional. Last December, because we honor our parents, everything from this July, everything that comes into being to December is kept for Shiloh. For Shiloh. As soon as Shiloh is over, the next anything that comes into view is put together. December 31st. If there's anything in the 7th, we add to it as lead. We take it to the couplings. Why do we do that? It's honor. Honor. Every time we make a t-shirt, even when we're making our dummy, stupid, dirty, old, anyway, I repent. They were not dirty, stupid, old, Miss G and the Bill family. 
I'm stabbing Miss G because that's her mama. Melissa. <laughs> but I'm explaining that we have grown in our quality of t-shirt. Even when our t-shirts were not the quality that they are, we gave them first. They can tell you, we'll put them in a nice boxes and take it to church and give one to our pastors and give one to our uh, Papa Kenneth and Mama Gloria. Do they have to wear it? For where? Is practicing the principle. It's costly. This last December, I had to go with a friend and the friend made us late. Hey, I almost passed out. But then I didn't know that it was even a divine, or let's say daddy walked it out in such a way. Because I was like, now we've come to church late. How can we give our gifts? How are we going to manage to give our gifts? The Holy Spirit said, calm down. And he showed me how. And I strategically located myself. And there's this one woman the Lord has given us favor with that goes directly to them. We'll give our gifts and they should take it. We've had testimonies that our gifts have met the right people. They've even written to us. I have letters in view files that are written. There's one, Mama Gloria Coppola wrote it herself. There's one you can tell that it's from the people that write on their behalf. Let me explain what I'm saying. It is costly. Even to get your gift to these people, it is costly, but you must be intentional. It must be. We, we, we have made up our mind that when it comes to kingdom life, it doesn't matter the cost. It doesn't matter the obstacle. We are intentional. Mm. I tell you the truth. Nothing is new under the sun. I tell you. Just know. That's why he says in Jeremiah. He says, know the ancient paths. Know the old road. Eh? And do it. And see the result. It's not far now. It's right there. You, 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 you heard that um, the, the Red Sea was parted, right? In, in the book of Genesis. Or oh, Exodus. Jesus walked on water. If he wanted to part, he would part. All of the miracles that you see, even in the ministry of Jesus, the feeding. If you continue to study the second king, you see that even Elijah, Elisha fed uh, people like the same way. Look at what he did. Nothing is new, I tell you. Just know what they are doing to succeed. Do the same. Somebody's listening to me. I know somebody's listening to me. I don't want to say you're not hearing. No, everyone is hearing. Mm -hmm. I want to say what I want to say, that you're hearing me. Elijah parted the water with what? With the cloth. Elisha did the same. So what's mm -hmm. new? He just mm -hmm. learned what his master did. He did. Mm -hmm. Do you know why the enemy has made you very proud? Oh, don't learn from anybody. You have the same Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you have, you will have a bigger anointing than everybody. Don't submit to anybody. Because he knows that in this kingdom, bastards don't go anywhere. Who is, your, who is your DNA? What's your DNA? Who are you following after? Oh no, I've tried three men of God. You know, when I begin to listen to them, in the next two weeks, they begin to say stupid things. Forgive them. Forgive them, except they are sinning. If they are living in sin, mm -mm. no compromise because it's going to come to you. No. All right, we'll leave that one alone. I wrote down concluding statement number three. After every test, I even went down and said, immediately before, okay, I said, after every test is promotion. And then I explained. Mm -hmm. Immediately before a major promotion is an intentional, intended distraction. You know, many people will say trouble. No, it's not trouble. I call it distraction. Every time you're going to be majorly promoted in this kingdom, you will begin to face trouble, craziness, stupid things happening around you. I call it distraction because if you focus on those things, you will miss the miracle. You missed the promotion. Look at Elijah. How many years had he saved Elijah? The last day, all the Tom and Dick prophets. You, you, remember, you know those are church members, right? Those prophets, they're church members. Mm -hmm. okay. Is it not the same prophet that they always saving? Mm -hmm. All of them were saving Elijah. My, pro, my question is, today that he's going, was it not the day that everybody should be following after him? I said, give me small, give me a little bit, give me pinches. They said that. 
And they were trying to discourage the one that said he was not going to be discouraged. Distract the one that refused. Mind who your friend is at church. Oh, mind who your friends at church is. Mind the ministry you say you're running with. One of the things I said, I said, from I die to I go to eternity, I am not collaborating. I would teach my spiritual children when they have their ministry, they need mom to come. That's the only place I will ever go to preach my whole life. I have seen some things in these few years of ministry. The same fingers you want to fit always beat your hand. Why? Why? Doesn't make sense. Because we're not in the same kingdom. Two different kingdoms. And a true kingdom sister cannot beat your fingers. You're feeling them. Can't. It's not possible. The Bible says it, it's not me. He said they, they left us because they were not, they were not of us. Of us. Now, what, what does that mean? It means that demons know they have their own camp. They have their own group. It might be kingdom people. It might be religious people. It might be different mindset. That's their calm. You don't judge anybody. You stay on your lane. Why did I make that statement before somebody misunderstand me? Are these not the same people that said they were sons of the prophet? When they say son of the prophet, they were learning from the prophet. They were following the prophet. If you and I are truly kingdom citizens and our focus is to build the kingdom, why will you want the enemy to use you to be a distraction to me. Why? If truly we're serving the same Jesus, wouldn't you be looking for ways to serve Jesus? And wouldn't I be looking for a way to serve Jesus? And our focus would be the same direction. Immediately before a major promotion is an intentional, on purpose distraction, in bracket trouble. Not because you are really in trouble. But because you've already won. Uh, catch this. You have already won. So this trouble and this distraction is coming so you don't get your trophy. It's not coming because you're in trouble. Mm. It's very important. It's because the winning is settled. It's because mm. that promotion is settled. It's because that thing that that man of God is supposed to release on you is settled. Mm. That's why there are these distractions. If you would just stay focused before you know it, the services you've rendered, the love you've shown, excuse me, couples, you can tell when there's going to be a miracle coming to your house by the level of craziness you begin to see. Did you say that? Oh, I thought you said this. Oh, no, you didn't say that. Why didn't you say it nicely? You should have said it correctly. I think you, you were loud. Why didn't you just say like a wife? Don't you know wives need to talk like, hey, come on. That's an indication something is wrong. Why? Because every time, these demons, they live in the spirit. So every time they see like angelic activities around you, they just come there and it begins to, there's a Cameroonian dance called Mbaya. They just begin to do Mbaya. Mbaya is one of the most funniest dance. You don't even know if they are dancing head or tail. So what do these demons do? They come into your house. They are looking for the least thing they can catch to bring problem. And when you yield to their, their beckonings, you talk to your wife, they make sure that the transmission is breakdown in transmission. And then your wife now picks it and brings a fight. Instead of focusing, you now begin to focus on each other. Instead of looking up. But when you look at it and say, ah, me and my husband, we're a team. Kai, no, we can't fight each other at all. We can't. And then what will happen? Your eyes will still be up. Your focus will still be up. And the promotion will come. I wrote down next number one, two, three, four, five, number six concluding statement. Always do the word. Amen. Don't listen and look at people. Do the word. If you don't know what word to do in a situation, do that which looks like that is character. What is that is character? Patient and kind. 
if you're in a situation and you really don't know what to do, practice patience, practice kindness. Then as you begin to ask daddy, he will show you what to do. And then you do it. And then as you do it, don't forget what you're going to benefit even the most, especially if it's a kingdom project or if it's something you're doing in the kingdom, many other people will benefit from it as you teach them to do the same. Where do you find that in this story? If you read the book, this um, uh, Second Kings, you will see that in the latter part of, of Elijah, he had taken up and started teaching sons of the prophet. He did the same thing. In the latter part of his year, after practicing, after doing service, honor, being patient, being kind uh, to, to his man of God, he learned the secret and he did it. He succeeded and then he started teaching other people. Isn't that what the kingdom is about? Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. The B part. He's a great man because he did the word. He did the kingdom principle and then he taught other people to do the same. I want us to pray. That's the teaching for tonight. If you look at the, the questions on the platform, you can answer them from this teaching. I did make sure that I touch all the questions. I, I didn't put it like you question A, question B, or question one, two, three, four. But you can see that all the questions were answered. I, I did it, it, uh, tell us about the, the different system uh, that he used or components of the system. We saw that clearly. How did he apply it? We saw how he applied it, how he applied uh, um, knowledge, how he applied sacrifice, the verse 3. What was that honor system if we saw that too? What doors did it open? The, the anointing, the whole thing. <laughs> he opened the biggest door you can think about. If you read um, towards the end of, of verse 15, you see that when he went back, they bowed down to him. They screamed. They screamed. They said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came, met him, and bowed down to him. So he opened the door of the same anointing that he's been serving for years. For years. So my deep findings was what I just shared with us. The takeaway, honor is costly. It has to be intentional. Nothing is new under the earth. He used the same strategy his father used and he made it. Promotion is always preceded by chaos. Every time that he wants to change your life, chaos will show up. But you have to be focused. Stay still. Don't be moved. Because that chaos will give way to your promotion. And... Uh, Whatever you learn and you know in this kingdom, make sure you, you practice it, you do it, and then you teach other people. Amen? Amen. 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 We we'll thank Daddy for um, this word. Thank him. Name a few things that have stood up for you and ask him for the grace to uh, um, do that which you have learned this evening. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this word. We were so grateful for opening up this for us. None of us will be remain the same. We choose to do to apply the system and we refuse to be mediocre. So your keys walk to generation and we know that we use the as we choose to use it that it will bring the same result that generations after us have seen and enjoyed thank you in Jesus name Amen Amen prayer point number one Father help me to discern value where others don't see it 
Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to descend from you where others do not see it. That others do not see it. Help me to discern when I see it. The next prayer point, Lord, help me to be focused and to serve greatness so I can also be great. Amen. You don't become great because you like to. You only become great when you serve greatness. Amen. Oh, that's the truth. That's the easiest way to be great in this life. Pray now. Father, help me to be focused and save regardless of the challenges, regardless of the challenges, help me to be focused and to serve in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, to be focused and to serve in the name of Jesus. Let me to be focused, Lord. Father, we receive the grace to be doers of this word. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that the days that we forget, Holy Spirit will remind us Amen. that we will honor our pastors, we will honor our husbands, we will honor our wives, we will honor our children, we will honor everyone that is made in your image. Show us how to appropriate honor and to do it because we are your children and receive the rewards that only you can give and our rewards from you. Amen. 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 Amen.